Hello my dear science nerds and welcome to my channel Let's Chemistry. The materials presented in this video are only for educational purposes. Because of the multiple complaints on the charming speech abilities of our computer lady, from now on we are going to record my voice for our little projects. Today we are going to repeat the experiment and make 4-bromo-1,3-benzodioxol or otherwise 4-bromo-1,2-methylendioxybenzene. We plan to improve the technique and compare the results. As we have mentioned previously, we are going to selectively brominate in chloroform solvent 1,2-methylendioxybenzene using n-bromosoxycinamide, called otherwise NBS. Let's get started. This time we are changing an addition order. We place 10.5 grams of 1,2-methylendioxybenzene at first, followed by 39 milliliters of chloroform. We are adding 15 grams of the NBS as a last reagent. We are setting the heater to 100 degrees Celsius and start stirring. Reflux must be maintained for 3 hours. Like before, the reaction mass has become transparent red for a few minutes and has been turned into opaque again. The red liquid in the flask remains as a sunset on the beach. After having 3 hours reflux done, we cooled down the flask to room temperature and we are starting the filtration process. We washed the reaction flask and the NBS on silite filter twice with 20 ml of chloroform. We have assembled apparatus for simple distillation and have placed the filtrate to the flask. We will not use rotary evaporator as we did previously. The distillation of the solvent is not that time consuming process. This time the distilled solvent is orange. This must be an indication of bromine presence. After finishing the solvent fraction, we change the receiving flask. The product and NBS mixture is distilling over. The distillation is taking much more time. The temperature of the vapor is 165-169 degrees this time. Do we have a better vacuum in the system? After finishing the distillation, we are diluting the distilled product with diethyl ether. We are placing the solid sodium hydroxide to the solution. The product must be stored for 3 hours on the solid sodium hydroxide. This time no blue coloration has been observed. We are decanting the liquid to the 1 liter separation funnel. The product is being washed with distilled water. To our surprise there is no emulsion and no problem with separation. Probably less side products were formed this time. After separation, we extract the water layer with 30 ml of DCM twice. We dry the combined extracts using anhydrous magnesium sulfide. At the final step of the solvent evaporation, we use rotary evaporator. Under vacuum, the solvent is evaporated within minutes. The final yield is 9 grams again. This result is surprising and disappointing at the same time. We thought that time we had been less messy during the experiment and yield could have been improved. But we have got the same results. It could mean two things. Either we got the decent yield at the first trial and now we have got similar results or we have not succeeded in both cases, which is a little bit disappointing. What do you think? Leave comments. Thanks for watching.